Before we get started drilling down, I want to mention that, for learning purposes, we're going to use several tools on the commercial loan sales case, so it may seem like there is some repetition. In your own projects, use whatever tools are necessary to document your drill down process and determine the focus of your project. We'll begin with a blank QFD. This is also known as a house of quality. Let's start building our house. We're going to start with our original customer CTQs. These will be entered in the left column and we'll call them our what's because they represent what the customer wants. Based on survey data, we know the commercial loan customers want cash on time, an easy process, professional service, to receive the full amount, and to get proactive feedback on status. Next, use the collective knowledge of the team to rank the importance of those wants. The scale can be arbitrarily chosen. However, a scale of 1 to 5 is commonly used, with 5 being the most important and 1 the least. For example, cash on time rated a 5 because it's a very important CTQ. Then, the team brainstorms the internal processes or product characteristics that impact those customer desires. These items are how we impact what the customer wants, so we'll call these our hows and fill them in along the top row. Once that list is complete, use the matrix to rate the relationship of each function or process to the customer wants based on the 931 scale shown. For example, the relationship between cash on time and loan approval is strong, so we'll rate that as a 9. Finally, multiply each relationship rating by the importance rating for that row. Then, total the results of each column and put that number in the total cell. For example, going down the disbursement method column, multiply 5 times 9, add that amount to 4 times 3, and so on, for a total of 76. Evaluate the totals of each column to determine which of our hows have the greatest impact on what the customer wants. But these are still too broad to effectively measure, so we need to drill down further. Click Next to build a second house of quality. Watch this. We take the highest scoring hows from the first house, and they become the what's of a second. Since the rankings are pretty close for all the hows in the first house, we'll include all of them in the second. The logic of moving from house to house is that those internal processes or product characteristics that have the greatest impact on customer satisfaction are more specific components of what the customer wants. And we can drill down further and identify how to meet those new what's. Depending on the nature of your project, you might need to do three or four levels of drill down to get a manageable process or product characteristic for your project. Click Next to complete this QFD. Looking at this second house, which three sub-processes would likely become the what's of a third house? You got it! If you total the columns, the hows with the highest total scores would be further investigated in the third QFD. Click Next to continue. From this second house, it becomes clear focusing our attention on reducing the cycle time for the credit check will provide us with the opportunity to satisfy many customer requirements at the same time. As for the other characteristics, this information can be provided to other functional teams to address in detail. So, we'll take credit check cycle time and drill down further on it. Whoa, it sounds like we have some dispute over what sub-processes are involved in this. I think I know a way to resolve this. Click Next to find out how. There is another tool that can help us graphically represent a process and come to a common understanding of the factors involved. Choose that tool from the list below. Right, a process map is a graphical representation of a process, and a big benefit of creating one is that it helps a group to come to a shared vision of what the process is. Click Next to continue. So, start by brainstorming steps in the credit check process. Don't worry about order yet. 
Just list them. Once the brainstorming is over, start sequencing the steps until you come to an agreed order. In a process map, symbols represent each type of process step, and arrows show the connections between these steps. For convenience, we have used primarily rectangles to represent the steps. Click Tell Me More to see a complete list of process map symbols. Well, it sounds like the group believes that application data entry is a problem area. Keep that characteristic in mind and click Next to look at the issue from one more angle. Here is another way to look at our issue to make sure we aren't missing something that we should consider for our project. It is called a fishbone or cause and effect diagram. First, put the effect you want in the head of the fish. In our case, that is to reduce the loan application process cycle time. Label the bones with categories that are appropriate to your problem, anything that will help the group think creatively about the subject. In our specific situation, we have chosen to use people, customer, environment, methods, and materials. Then, fill in the causes of the effect under the appropriate category. Finally, rate the causes according to ease of implementation and impact on the issue using the numbers shown in this scale. Click Next to continue. The group thinks manual entry of data is a characteristic that would be manageable and worthwhile to improve. Based on that information, how do you think they would rate it on a scale from 1 to 4? Here is another the group thinks manual entry of data is a characteristic that would be manageable and worthwhile to improve. Based on that information, how do you think they would rate it on a scale from 1 to 4? Based on the group's input, this characteristic would rate a 1 for high impact and ease of implementation. Click Next to see what the group decides on the rest. The manual data entry process, as you've seen, is part of the overall credit check process, identified earlier as an area needing improvement. And it rated a 1 on the fishbone diagram for a high impact and ease of implementation. This tells us that the group believes it would be a good process to focus our improvement project on. There is another quantitative tool we can use to verify the group selection. Can you remember what it is? Click Next to learn more. Does the term Pareto chart sound familiar? A Pareto chart is much like a histogram. It takes raw data and puts it in a form that allows us to analyze it visually. When trying to decide on a project focus, it helps us to compare how frequently different causes occur or how much each cause is costing the organization. This allows us to separate the vital few causes those with high frequencies, cost, or time impact, from the so-called trivial many that do not have as much of an impact. Click Next to learn what a Pareto chart can tell us about the commercial loan sales case. As it turns out, we aren't the first team to consider credit check cycle time. Siggy has sent over a Pareto chart based on an earlier study of the subject. Let's see if it can help us finalize our selection of a focus for the commercial loan sales project. In this case, the data represents man hours spent on correcting missing data for each of the processes associated with the credit check. Those processes are listed along the bottom of the chart. And a scale of hours from 0 to 180 appears on the left side. The blue bars on the chart indicate the number of man hours spent on each process. For example, in this study, 18 hours were spent on correcting errors in the credit return process. From the chart, you can see that the most hours were spent on correcting application data entry errors, which means the cost of rework for this process step is high in comparison to many of the others. You can also see from the cumulative percentage on the right that this task is responsible for almost 50% of the rework time, so reducing the defects caused in data entry 
can potentially reduce total rework time by about 50%. That ranks it among the vital few and in accordance with the results from the other drill down tools, makes it a good process to focus on for our Six Sigma project. We've decided on our project focus, but before you finish this lesson, there is one more tool to look at in detail. Click Next to continue.